everybody, my name is Jason Piercy, and this is Out of the Fog. This one is a good show. I know I say it a lot, but it's true. This is a good show. We're gonna talk to Alan Doyle from TikTok, <laughs> and also to Nicole Tedford from Dollar a Day and the wonderful things that they do. And we're also gonna talk to Jackie Sullivan about what it means to have fiery hockey blood up on the southern shore. And we got a video for you. All that when we come back. Watching Rogers TV, St. John's. Anthony will never marry. If it comes to that, I'll freeze my eggs. You should freeze your whole body if you're waiting for that. Anthony, time is running out. Would you marry me? <laughs> Harry's been snail mapped. We've got to go help them. Seize them. Patrick, what are you doing? Free food. <laughs> Welcome back to Out of the Fog. Uh, a couple of pretty interesting, fascinating, and helpful people to introduce to you. First of all, Nicole Tepford, uh, Executive Director of Dollar Day. And um, you may know this gentleman as being world renowned for his sea shanty TikToks. <laughs> Thank That's you very all you, much. That is all you have That's done it. with your life. It's, and you know what? I'll take it. I'll take any introduction. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, thanks for having me and Nicole on to talk about Dollar Day Foundation. I yeah, appreciate cool. it. It's nice to be here. And, Nice to be here in these digs, and it's nice to be nice to be home. Believe it or not, even though someone like me has been home more than I've ever been home in my life, but it's <laughs> given me a great appreciation for it. I'll tell you that it's given me a great appreciation for uh, spending a, basically a calendar year in Newfoundland, which I haven't done it's since been a little while, huh? 1993. I'd say you know, like so. Which is the last time your hockey team was valuable to anybody? That's right. Okay, cool. <laughs> Moving on. Um, <laughs> He's read too much of my bio. He's, He's making Habs gags. I love it. I love um, it. Let's just give everybody some context sure. for what Dollar Day is. Sure. Dollar Day started really simply and organically. I, Great Big C had a, a recording studio down on one end of Water Street where the Boston Pizza is now down on the end of Water Street. And I lived down on the other side and I used to walk the length of Water Street every day. And I spoke to when we were doing a record, and I spoke to this gent who was on the street looking for money, and and I, I used to give him a dollar every day, and I learned about his mental health and addictions issues and the like. And uh, after about a month, when the record was done, we went down the road, and I wondered how I could give him a dollar a day without actually being there, there to give yeah. him a dollar a day. So that year, I saved a dollar. I said, I wonder what it's like to save a dollar a day, and I didn't find it very hard, you know. And like I just four quarters one day or a loony or whatever. And at the end of that year, I gave $365 to a mental health and addictions facility here in St. John's. And I did that two or three years in a row. And uh, I told my friends one Christmas, myself and Brendan Paddock and Andrew Fury, uh, we were out uh, bombing around Christmas time, and I told them what I was doing. And they quickly said that they thought it was a great idea. And they, and they quickly came up with the notion that we should build an engine that everybody could do that. We make it easy for everyone just to give a dollar a day. And we'll take those dollars and give it to mental health and addictions facilities. And, and after a year or so of research and building, uh, just under uh, three years ago, we launched the Dollar Day Foundation here in Newfoundland Labrador, a national charity that has grown to uh, give to mental health and addictions facilities uh, in every province and every territory of the country. I mean, it's about as cool and as powerful as it gets, um, because a dollar a day can't buy you a coffee, but it can save a life. Yeah, yeah so. it's, it's the thing <laughs> of the, it, it, we, what we love about it is the, 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 the growth in numbers and the, you know, the, the thing that it, by math, just proves how a tiny bit of help from everybody makes a massive It's the value difference. of scale. It's the value of scale, and I know Nicole's been thrilled about the whole notion, too, of having people from all different parts of the country and different walks of life, you know, donating, because you, you see the back end way more than me and where everyone's from, and mm -hmm. you were you were mentioning how, pe how thrilled you were to see people from different parts of the country giving. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so let's talk about that. Yeah. Yeah, so again, we did, like Alan said, uh, it's a simple mission. What we do is we raise funds to bridge the gap between the availability and the need um, for mental health and addictions programs and 
and facilities across the country. Um, and we really wanted the movement to be very grassroots. You know, it's not like, oh, some big corporate's gonna splash, you know, $10 million or here's this black tie fundraiser. It was really meant to be a grassroots movement that your dollar matters and your dollar matters and together we're gonna make a Im big impact with yeah, those dollars. Yeah, because I suppose otherwise you'd be taking away the value of such a good namesake. Yeah, absolutely. Like if, you, if, like if Shell gave you $5 million, which would be great, mm -hmm. Shell, if you're watching, but <laughs> it's not the point. Cool. Right? Yeah. It's, we, love the, we love the idea where we've created a thing so far that where every part of, you know, every group, every individual feels welcomed and worthy and equal. You know, so for example, you know, we were doing some supper time sing alongs and we had a lot of people doing one time donations. We signed up a lot of people who wanted to become dollar a dayers. And we had a couple of, you know, uh, corporate partners in the community around Atlantic Canada or around the, the entire country that helped us uh, promote it and raise it. And, and we, we gave kids help phone $100,000 in a week mm -hmm. earlier yes. in the pandemic. And that's, you know, really a result of groups, individuals, small and large businesses all working together uh, to help. And I think that's, yeah. that's a fantastic feeling when all, you know, all the columns of our, you know, of our community all yeah. work together like that, because that's when you can really get stuff done. So I can remember um, just sort of, I, you know, in the first, I'll say the first trimester of the pandemic, <laughs> I remember I interviewed somebody from Kids Help Phone, and they were talking about how their numbers were way, yeah. way, way up in calls, which makes sense. You trap people in a place where they already feel unsafe. I mean, they're, they're going to need extra help. So they're obviously a really good place to be investing some of that money. I use the word investment because I think it, in, it invests into society as mm -hmm. opposed to, you know, in returns that I way. think it's an excellent, an excellent word to use for it is really because what you're really doing is taking, you know, your own hard earned dollars and helping people that are already doing the hard work. Yeah. You know, that's one of the things that we are always upfront about is like, is that we only do one thing. We give to people who are already doing it. You know, okay, and, and so that's, that's a really, really yeah. important distinction. Can, Nicole, can you give me an idea of some of the places where the money goes? Because you can donate money to mental health or addictions. Directly. D d straight to, uh, yeah. in, right? Fantastic. Right. So that's, yeah, it goes to somewhere for people who are actually working on it. Yeah, so I think one of the components of Dollar Day Foundation that is superb is that 100% of individual dollars go back to the front lines of proven mental health and addictions programs across the country in communities in programs in folks own backyard um, so like Alan said earlier we've been able to provide funding for programs from coast to coast to coast across Canada so if you look in BC and Vancouver um, we support the Salvation Army Harbor Light um, if you look here locally in St. John's Newfoundland we actually have provided funding to nine different programs um, wow. in Newfoundland and Labrador um, but primarily Thrive would be part of our charter cause. Um, and then if you look in Nova Scotia, we have Landing Strong and, and they help folks um, dealing with PTSD and operational stress injury. Um, you know, there's Kids Help Phone, there's Headstrong, which is a Mental Health Commission of Canada program that helps with kind of anti-stigma, with anti-stigma against mental health and, and bullying and, and talks to kids um, all across Canada in every little pocket in rural communities. Um, so it's really wide spread and and again we um, have provided funding like I said across Canada um, to over 33 programs right now is, yeah. is on the list and uh, awesome. we're pretty proud of that. The, the stigma thing stands out to me as incredibly powerful I mean I've got my own diagnoses three of them yes and I take pills for them and like I live a normal life just like everybody else and yes. the, and the stigma thing is really interesting to me I can remember I hosted um, a, an event for a channel um, to just to be the MC for their in-house talent show, yeah. just fun for everybody to right. enjoy and to grow and to learn and yeah. just. And um, um, Mr. John Haggy was there and he spoke for a minute and he said that he's old enough to remember when there was a huge stigma surrounding a cancer diagnosis. You were scared to death to tell anybody oh, that you had cancer because nobody understood it. Like, can I catch the cancer? There was like, oh, and wow. everybody was afraid of it. And cancer was this big, like stigmatized blackness that nobody was comfortable admitting. And then when we removed the stigma, yeah. and we started curing it, and now survival rates are, can be into the high 90s in a lot of cases, and none of that happened 
until we were able to take away the darkness surrounding the conversation. Mm -hmm. So being able to remove some of that stigma from addictions especially. It's not as bad with mental illness as it used to be, but it's still there. But addictions ex especially. Now you raise a real good point, and, and I'm, I was, I w that's a d delightful story to hear from Mr. Haggy because that's, um, I, I wasn't aware that you know that that would have been a thing, but I'm certainly old enough to remember when you would never get on television and say, "Well, I have three mental health or addictions diagnoses." Well, absolutely. And, you know, and you would never say that. And and but one of the things that we wanted to do from the beginning, like so many other mental health and addictions programs, is to bring it out of the dark and have us all talk about it. Yeah. The same way you talk about a broken elbow and all that stuff. <laughs> but there is one other brushstroke to it that excites me. Right in that, like compared to say, you know, just a cancer diagnosis, because I wish that us talking about someone's, you know, cancer diagnosis would make that cancer diagnosis get better. Right? I wish that was true, because I talk about it all that yeah. until they got better. Yeah. But with mental health and addictions, it, is kind it of true. actually <laughs> does help. It does. Right? So part of the big <clears throat> thing Dollar Day Foundation does is we also, you know, as well as raising money, is we raise awareness and we have messaging and, and to get the conversation going, you know, and that's because that is not only good for um, like awareness and fundraising, it's good for awareness and healing. Like it is actually makes it easier, yeah. you know, uh, for people and, and it's uh, and, and that's exactly why I can sit here on television and say, like, yeah, yeah, I take stuff for my ADHD or my depression yeah. or, or my anxiety. And right. I'll tell you that, like, over the pandemic, I do was too much red wine. Yeah. I'm fully aware of it. Yeah. But if I'm not honest about it mm -hmm. and yeah. I consider myself woke or an advocate, sure. what kind of hypocrite am I? Well, actually, the Canadian Mental Health Association National um, ran a, a research study um, with the University of British Columbia and a few others, and, and they found that 40% of Canadians Canadians say that their mental health has deteriorated since the yeah. pandemic began. And you know, that coupled with the fact that we already know that one in five Canadians struggle with mental health, um, you know, they face a lot of mental health challenges. So you think about, you know, the pandemic, people were like, obviously we knew that threat to our physical health was, it was obvious, like it's there, you know, six feet apart. But unfortunately, six feet apart made it really difficult for people to connect yeah, exactly. and well, to talk about their mental health. So it's more important than ever, um, you know, to address that and, and to speak and to make sure you're still connected with your loved ones and who are in isolation and, and reach out. Suicide and addictions have killed more people in our province than COVID-19 is. Well, uh, and Canada not, loses 11 um, people a day to suicide. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and I'm not going to take away from what is obviously very important healthcare priority. Mm -hmm. sure. It's not the only one. Mm -hmm. There's another no, deplorable thing happening that we can talk it's about. It's why we were so thrilled when we started doing the supper time sing-alongs, for example, when the pandemic started, because not only did it raise you know, money for things like Kids Help Phone and Thrive here in St. John's or the eight or nine other ones that we support in Newfoundland and Labrador and the ones across the country, but it also got the dialogue going because mm -hmm. just when we needed to be open and talking about how you're feeling and how you're doing it, we provided an avenue for people yeah. to do that and people responded. So, I mean, again, we're just super grateful for everybody who supports what we're doing. It helps us support people who are doing the hardest work and uh, it all, it all, you know, rising tide lifts all boats. Exactly. Um, Nicole Allen, Allen, thank you so, so much for coming out. Uh, go to Dollar a Day. Uh, it's a dollar a day. And go to TikTok and check out the Seek Champions. <laughs> we'll be right back after this. All right, girls. Uh, Mom, you said it's played again. Workplace injuries hurt the most at home. Welcome back to Out of the Fog. I got a really cool video to share with you, but before we do that, I got a really cool person 
to share with you. Ladies and gentlemen, Jackie Sullivan, you probably already know her, singer, songwriter, you're accomplished in and so far beyond what people are looking at back here that we'll, we'll, we can leave that stuff for now. Foregone conclusion of awesomeness. Thank you. Okay. Um, tell me about Fiery Hockey Blood. So about a year ago, I guess, or a little more than that, I wrote a song because I was inspired by my dad and his dear friend, Kenny Williams, who is a Hockey Canada award recipient. And um, they both share a deep fire for the game, like an intense passion that I've never seen before, really. And so a couple of years ago, my dad suffered several strokes and he had temporary memory loss. Oh, goodness. And so one night at St. Clair's Hospital, amidst not being able to recall what he ate that day or what year it was, he recounted for me intricate details of a game from 1985. And he sat there and he was like, in 1985, Gary Sullivan was coming down the right-hand side <laughs> and he shot it in the top left-hand corner and we beat Bay Bulls three to two with two minutes and 33 seconds left in the third period. <laughs> and I just thought, that's incredible. Um, but the strokes had really stolen his fire and he was, he was really flat. But the only person he wanted to see was Kenny Williams. And all he wanted to do with Kenny was talk hockey. And the day I brought him to see Kenny, the change in a man that I saw that day was indescribable. And I just, I felt really compelled to write about the game because as I thought about it, I just thought, you know what? This is much more than just a game. Oh my goodness, it's a culture, it's a lifestyle, it's a passion, it's a drive, it's... Everything, and, and for the Southern Shore, you know, it, it was a game that brought communities together and built friendships and helped kids find their way and built character and perseverance. And so I just knew that while this was their story, it was also representative of what Southern Shore hockey is all about and what Newfoundland and Labrador hockey culture is all about. Yeah, and, and if, if your father can go through that and find bright spots in an otherwise difficult moment in his life by recollecting that passion with somebody who he was deeply connected to, how many other people can benefit from those same reminders, from those same sort of feelings and thoughts. So the song was written, yep. uh, and the song is excellent. Thank <laughs> it's you. Just, and it's just so fun. Like, I'm a hockey fan, and I play hockey, so I feel it. when I, it, Like, it pumps you up, right? Right, yeah. Tell me the story about how the video happened in relation to the song. Well, it, the song kind of took on a life of its own, really. And so in the beginning, I had just planned to record the song. And I had requested Chris Andrews to come and be a part of it, and he did so without hesitation and brings an enormous amount of grit to the song, which I always wanted. Um, but as I got into it and thought more about the history of hockey in this province and on the southern shore in particular, I thought, how cool would it be to do a video and to capture that piece of legacy that we all know and love. The nostalgia, the history, oh, the... It's yeah. incredible, and so I contacted Roger Monder of Up Sky Down Films, and he was super excited about it, and he did an amazing job. Roger's a talented guy. He's very amazing, yeah, so we, um, I was just trying to come up with ideas around what would be super cool, so I wanted the younger kids involved, um, I, and I wanted some of the local hometown hero, heroes involved. So I contacted Mr. Bob Cole and Mr. Ryan Klo, and of course, Calvert's local hero, Andy Sullivan. And listen, I, I, wanna, I just wanna interject for a second because it's, it's really, really difficult to have a conversation about hockey legacy on the Southern Shore and not bring up the name Sullivan constantly. And you are also Sullivan, so and you're related to all of these rock stars. So, <laughs> but I will commend you on doing a good job of separating yourself from that family legacy in producing this, because it could have very easily been the Sullivan Show. It could have been. <laughs> it could have been absolutely. But I wanted this to be a community project of the whole entire Southern Shore. So I was very diligent and cognizant in choosing people that were representative from each community, and. I will say to you that I really feel that I have created and we have created a piece of history here because to have Mr. Bob Cole on board <laughs> at 87 years old. That's so cool. Um, and to do what he's doing in this video and, um, you know, to be calling a play from a 1994 Herder Championship hockey game 
will never happen again. No. And so it is so special to me. This project has been so emotional for me. Ryan Klo provides an incredibly nostalgic commentary. And it's so sincere. It's so authentic. And you can tell, like, that's not heavily produced. That's not scripted. It's Ryan Klo at his table in front of his cell phone get pouring out the legacy of hockey in the southern shore and that fire in your blood. I like, that's as real as it gets. I know. And I think for me, you know, when I saw the World Junior Championships and I saw Alex Newhook and Dawson Mercer. Well, I interviewed Alex a little while ago. Did you? Wow. What a guy. And so I just thought that my chorus of this song speaks to the entire hockey culture in Newfoundland and Labrador. And what I saw them demonstrate was what I feel about this song. It's a fiery hockey blood. That is what they demonstrated, right? And so, um, what I was watching, I was like, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. That is what I'm talking about. And it's that grit your teeth, cut you off of the knees. It's my puck, not yours. You know, and, and it's that kind of fire and passion that, that, that I think we have as a province. And, and certainly, I've come to know and learn and understand being from the Southern Shore yeah. and being a Sullivan. So I'm very lucky and very blessed. And the community came on board wholeheartedly. Like there are so many community sponsors here, like seemed, you know, yeah. that were and part of this. And it's a community of, of family and culture. And it's a community of grit and truculence and passion. And that, that's what comes through. So you and I, we're getting really excited about this. So what I want to do now is give everybody else an opportunity to watch it. This is the video for Fiery Hockey Blood with the lovely and talented Jackie Sullivan, accompanied by Mr. Chrissy Andrews. Enjoy. Hey, it's Ryan Klo, uh, retired NHL hockey player and proud Southern Shore native. I just want to say a few words about um, growing up in the Southern Shore and that, how, how that lit a fire and a passion uh, to help me achieve my goals and accomplish my dreams of making the NHL. In these early 90s, we would go down and watch the Southern Shore Breakers play and um, even when they would make their runs at the herder, it was still some of the best memories I have growing up going down and at a jam-packed Southern Shore arena and people were hanging off the, the beams and, you know, out the doors and it was just a, a great, great time and it just showed the passion that, and the culture for hockey in the Southern Shore. Coming up over the line, he's going in on goal. Number 10 scores again. Born into a simple life from a little harbor town with lessons all around him to the team he passed them down. Cause there's nothing sparks a fire in his eyes like hockey does Devoted his whole life to making memories with a game that he loves It was 1987, he recalls it oh so well They laid the ice upon this place, a story he still tells Keep love. 
Call the Rogers TV viewer response line, email us, or connect with us on social media. Welcome back to Out of the Fog. I feel really, really good about the stories that were told on this particular episode. Oh, dollar a day does a lot of really cool stuff. And it's your money actually goes directly to people who are already doing the hard work to make themselves better with mental health crisis, illness, and addictions. These are real problems. COVID-19 is also a real problem, but so is people who, you know, take their own lives. And warmness and heart and fire and blood straight out of there. Jackie Sullivan, thank you so much. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Call the Rogers TV viewer response line.